Sheikh Yasir Kadi takes the opportunity to talk about the story of Yajuj and Majuj, which has been mentioned in Surah 18 of the Quran. Let him speak. I myself have met people that have actually left Islam because of these types of tales. Muhammad, I'm a prophet because I said so. I have this hairy bow right on my shoulder, you know. And my best is buddy Allah, he works for me though. I call him God to make you think I'm pure as white snow. In the damp cave of Hira, I met this bad man. He squeezed me until I threw up the Quran. When I ran to Khadija in anguish and fears, she explained, This is too brutal and wiped off my tears. I'm Muhammad, I'm a prophet because I am him. And Allah caters to my needs and every win. His reward is that I let people think he is Lord. Then he lets me torment the people when I get bored. The issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is actually, for our modern times, I would say, one of the most, if not the most problematic of the signs of Judgment Day. And it has caused many of our youth to question, to doubt. I myself have met people that have actually left Islam because of these types of tales. And we have to be honest and frank and not pretend as if this doesn't exist. Perhaps some of you are not accustomed to hearing people speak like this, but my philosophy is different. We are dealing with the crisis of people leaving our faith, our own children, our own young men and women. And of the reasons why is that we are not answering some of these issues that they bring and we dismiss them. The issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is something that doesn't just occur in the hadith. It is explicit in the Qur'an. Standard medieval interpretation of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is the following. This is what you find in Ibn Kathir. You find it in the tafsir literature of a Samarqandi and of a Tha'labi. And basically, this is the mainstream interpretation for our classical and middle ages of Islam. If you look at any book of tafsir, any book of history, the notion was the following. Ya'juj and Ma'juj are a bizarre, exotic tribe in the nether regions of the world that have been trapped by Dhul Qarnayn thousands of years ago, and they're still trapped to this day. That Ya'juj and Ma'juj are a living tribe blocked to this day behind the wall that was built 4,000, 5,000 years ago, that wall miraculously is still there. People can see on the one side and on the other side, you have these savages that Allah knows how they're eating, drinking, replicating, whatnot, and they're still there for eons and eons and eons. Dare I say, anybody who knows science and geography and modern civilization, you cannot believe that there is a tribe for 4,000 years trapped behind a wall. I mean, if you believe this, any, that's your position, I, I cannot believe it. I'm just being, I cannot, I, I find this very difficult to believe. If you still believe that there's a big wall that is lasting for thousands of years, and by the way, no human structure is that fortified for four or five thousand years that nothing happens to it. Even the Great Wall of China needs to be built up or whatnot. I mean, it doesn't work that way. But anyway, if you believe, and anyway, so this is, uh, what can I say? If you believe it, you believe it. I am somebody who, I, 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 what, can, what can I say? I don't, I just, my mind doesn't believe this. Others have said, we need to reinterpret Ya'juj and Ma'juj metaphorically. And that is this newfangled interpretation. This is a very modern interpretation. It only begins in the 60s and whatnot, where they say Dajjal and Ya'juj and Ma'juj are symbolic. I admire the fact they're trying to salvage the tradition because they understand that mainstream interpretation doesn't make sense. Another group says, and this is something that I have heard myself some ulama say, that perhaps Ya'juj and Ma'juj are not 
on earth but under earth that's why the satellites haven't discovered them again I appreciate the salvaging I really do but how can human beings survive no vegetation no plants with the Sun no oxygen food drink thousands of years and according to these traditions we're talking about gazillions of people What is the answer to this conundrum of Ya'juj and Ma'juj? I will disappoint you by saying there is no clear-cut answer. I don't have a solution to Ya'juj and Ma'juj. I am personally skeptical. I mean, I have a degree in engineering. I understand mathematics and chemistry and geology. and I, 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 Allah knows best. Perhaps, perhaps, this notion of a living tribe of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is not correct. This notion of a living tribe of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is not correct. And this is what I firmly believe simply because it is highly problematic to posit that there are billions of people somewhere in today's world clawing away. There is another interpretation which I hesitate to even verbalize. And I will tell you honestly, this is not mine. One of my scholarly friends in a private conversation, so he will not allow me to mention his name. So we were talking with a group of ulama, a group of students of knowledge, what not call them, whatever you will, and we're talking about this problematizing. It is a problem. Well, it's a problem for any rational mind. What are you going to do with Ya'juj and Ma'juj? He said, let's look at these traditions again. We see that first and foremost, Ya'juj and Ma'juj seem to be human but not human. You see where this is heading. And they seem to be a race of people that cannot be fought. And they seem to be doing things that are bizarre. Drinking up all of this water. That's not humans can't do that. Mentally, they don't seem to be 100% there when they think they can kill the people of the heavens. This isn't normal. This isn't rational. The regular human beings alive, the followers of Isa, are so terrified of this group that they don't even want to see them. They're fleeing away from them. They will not fight them. The hadith mentions they will not be able to be fought. He mentions, if you look at the popular imagination of our times, you find a genre of literature and horror movies. What if the concept is there that these groups of people are human but not quite human? And they're doing all of these things and everything just started clicking in my head. Check, 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 check. <laughs> so, ayas, ayas, the key point. They shall die the death of one man. How will they get gotten rid of? Allah will send a disease. Some type of antivirus, some type of vaccine. I'm just saying what my friend said. Because the hadith mentions this explicitly, does it not? Allah will send something that will get them in the neck and they will die the death of one person. So when my friend kept on going over all of these points, my laughter turned to a serious contemplation. <laughs> and I said, but how do we tell the public this? Then I said, I'll just project it onto my friend, which it is true, it is coming from him. And I'll take myself out the picture, so that as you laugh, you laugh at my friend, but the laughter will slowly turn to contemplation. And deep down inside, you'll realize this makes a lot more sense than anything else out there. And deep down inside, you'll realize this makes a lot more sense than anything else out there. Well, not much to say. He said it all. Those fairy tale stories 
are causing some youth to leave Islam. As you leave Islam, let's turn to Lord Jesus Christ.